Are you interested in drawing vector art? Well, if not, why did you click this video? <laughs> But if you are, I would love to show you a technique for drawing some vector art inside of DaVinci Resolve, a free program. And then you can do all kinds of fancy stuff with it, like animate it, that type of thing. Let's go. Here we are in DaVinci Resolve, and let's say I want to draw a piece of vector art. We can do that in the Fusion page, which is made for compositing, but man, can just do all kinds of amazing things. So let's bring in some reference art. I'm just going to right click in our media pool. Let's import some media, and I'm going to import this very well done, very well drawn concept art for a monster. Kind of a little blobby thing with one eye. And let's draw a vector version of this preferably hopefully a lot better than this. This is my awesome skills with a Wacom tablet. Wow. So the first thing let's do is go up to the media pool. I'll right click and say new fusion composition and hit create. This is going to make a blank fusion composition and I'm going to take a background node and drag this into our nodes here. If you don't understand how nodes work, if you're unfamiliar with fusion, check out this video because uh, you're going to be really lost if you don't understand nodes at all. But if you do have a little grasp of nodes, this should be really cool. I think you'll like it. So we'll start with this background. I'm just going to make this kind of a grayish just so we have something nice to work on. It kind of looks like paper. Yeah, and let's bring in our reference. I'll just grab this concept art here, and then I'll hit one on the keyboard to bring this up on our left, and we don't really need to connect the node. I just want this here to look at. There are a lot of ways to draw vector art inside of Fusion, but I think the most versatile way is to mask background nodes. So the idea is this. We take a background node like this, and we can give it a color. So let's say maybe we'll make this guy green, okay? So kind of this, this nice green color. Then we can take this background, and we'll merge this over our background background, and now we have a green field. Let's rename this green. And this is kind of our master color for green, all right? Now we can take a mask, just like a polygon mask here, and attach it to our green. And we're going to draw the shape of his body. So I'll just start up at the top and I'll click and drag and that will give me a round corner. And then I can kind of click and drag and make this general sort of shape here, okay? And we don't have to get it perfect the first time because we can always go back and edit it. At the very end of our path, I can go over the first point and that'll give me this little circle and I can click and drag to adjust this point now. That's sort of what we want. I'm gonna move this around and kind of make this the shape we actually want. Yeah, maybe something a little bit more like that. And so that's his body. Now let's draw the next piece, which let's just draw his eyeball. And we're gonna do this again by just making a background node and we'll just use like an almost white, something like that. Rename this white and let's take and merge this and we'll draw a ellipse mask on that. And now this is his eyeball, right? So we can put this kind of in place. And so that'll be his eye. All right, next let's draw the actual kind of little dot inside of the eye and we'll do that with a black. So we'll just keep this black background and we'll call this black. And we'll also use an ellipse on this and we'll merge it and we can size this down to be his eyeball like this. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. It looks kind of like some art. You know what I'm saying? Now here's where things get really exciting. You can draw shapes like this in basically any program, but what's really cool about using nodes in Fusion is you can kind of reuse nodes. You can link them together. You can mask things with other things. It's really cool. So for instance, let's make his mouth which is also going to be a field of black. And I can do this a couple of ways. One way I can do it is just to add a mask to our ellipse mask here, and I'll give him a little smile like this, and that would totally work. We can just kind of add that to the black layer. We could also put this kind of on its own layer. It's kind of its own thing. If we wanna just take this polygon, I'm just holding shift to drag this out and just disconnect it. Let's rename this mouth mask. This will be called I dot mask. And we can take this black background and if we want to, we could copy this and paste it. And that's going to make a copy of our black and we can kind of put this in like this and we have the same kind of result, but this is separate so we can put stuff in between it. If we want the eye to move separately than the mouth or if we want to do some kind of fancy layering thing, but maybe let's say that we don't want any black. We want this kind of to be a dark red or something. We could adjust one background and then go in and adjust the other background and kind of make those similar. But what we can do if we want to keep this kind of same color is I can get rid of this. I'll grab black and hit control C and then click wherever I want this to show up and I'll hit control shift V and that'll make an instance. So an instance is like a copy of a node that kind of shares the same settings. And so if you change one instance, it changes both. So I can link this up and these two backgrounds will kind of share a color. So if I 
make this black, that will make both of them black. So I can have two different layers, but they share the same color. And what's really neat is I can recolor my artwork by just selecting any of these backgrounds here and anything that's white, if I wanna turn it you know, pink, I can do that. Anything that's green, I can adjust here. And you can connect this to 50 different things and it will still work all the same. It'll change everything all at once, pretty cool. So let's do kind of the same thing for his teeth maybe. So I'll take this white control C and click off and hit control shift V. That'll make an instance of our white. And I'll put this here in front of our mouth and let's draw some teeth here. There's one tooth and I'll just add another mask to this polygon that'll just add another tooth like that. So we'll have a couple of buck teeth. And again, those share that white. So if I wanna change that at any time, I can change them both all at once, right? But here's the thing. I want these teeth to be inside of his mouth. And right now they're kind of on top of his lips. So what I could do is take this down here and kind of try and line it up, which for this one instance of doing this, it isn't that big a deal to do something like that. It's all right, but it is a little bit more work and I have to be more exact and you know, just takes a little longer. So what if we could just use this mouth shape to limit where we see his teeth? And we can actually do that. All we have to do is take this mouth mask and I can pump this into our merge for our teeth and then boom, get that. So we're using this same shape to mask out these other shapes. That's where this gets really powerful with fusion, okay? So let's try this a different way. Let's give him some eyelids. And I think what we'll do is here in front of our eye dot, I'll just move this stuff over because you can think about these stacks as kind of like layers. So we start with the background, then we put this layer on, then we put this layer on and so forth from left to right. So if I want something to be on top of the eyeball, I can put this to the right of the eyeball, right? So let's make a new background node and I'm just gonna steal the same color from the green but I'm gonna make it a little bit darker just take the green down and the red down a little bit we're just gonna kind of darken this down a little bit something like that and we'll call this dark green merge this over but I want this to only be where the eye is so we can take this ellipse for our eye that's our eye mask take this eye mask and pump it into our merge and now the green is only over where that eye is and now we can limit this dark green with something like another ellipse like this. And we can kind of give him an eyelid here and it only shows it over the eye. So we can save a lot of time by just doing it this way instead of having to redraw something, right? So there's his eyelid. We could even copy and paste this and combine those and put one up at the top like this. And that works pretty well. Look at our character, that's really neat. So that's a really slick way to draw things. And you kind of just build it from left to right, making your color and then drawing the shape as a mask for that color and just kind of build it from left to right, just like you would layers, except for from bottom to top, it goes left to right. Let's add a little bit of shading to this guy. Again, maybe we'll do it right here after the green, call this body mask. Maybe we'll do something like grab this dark green, I'll hit control C, click off control shift V, and we'll put this dark green over everything. But this time we're gonna mask this green and we'll just kind of select a section here, maybe a section here. And I'm just kind of cutting into this. However, I think he'll be shaded. I'm just kind of shading him on one side, making this weird shape like this that completely looks strange here until we take this body mask and limit it with the body mask. And now we have shading on him, pretty cool. And of course we can always go back and adjust this to make a little more sense. Yeah, so there's a little bit of shading on our guy. Maybe we wanna add a little bit of shine. Same thing, we can take this white, control C, control shift V, and we'll put this white here and we'll limit it with something like an ellipse. And we can put a little spot here on his head to show that he's kind of shiny, right? Just throw this here like that. I could even copy and paste this ellipse, move this over, do another little shine on him like that. Look at that, he looks great. There's our little blobby guy. And so that's a nice way to kind of draw a cartoon character, some kind of uh, vector art here in Fusion. And this works for logos, this works for anything you wanna draw. So yeah, pretty cool way to make art inside of Fusion. Like I said, there's lots of ways to do it, but this is kind of a nice way to be able to do things. And again, I really like the availability to kind of change these color palettes, kind of change everything all at once. So we'll maybe make this guy blue instead. And it's pretty easy to change all of the colors here without having to go in and select every object. It works pretty well. So yeah, I hope that's helpful for anybody looking to uh, make some of their own art inside of Resolve. If you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments. And if you wanna learn more about Fusion, we have a class, Pro Compositing and VFX in Fusion. It's available now at groundcontrol.film. Goes through all of the fancy things you can do in Fusion. A little bit more of the visual effects side of things. But if you're wanting to learn that, maybe do some movie magic, that's a great place to start. I hope this episode had enough character for you. Get it? Because he's a character. You get it. You, you do.